Right, let's get this party started. Um, just a moment to see if we are live on YouTube. Uh, it should be live. Yeah, it's live. Good. So if you want to, to watch this on YouTube, there is also a link that I will paste in Zoom. So it's both streamed on Zoom and on YouTube. Uh, suit your need. If you want to be on the move, perhaps YouTube is better. But in Zoom, you can ask me in voice the questions you have. Maybe maybe after I finish showing what I want to show, you can ask, you can unmute. During that time, you can ask any questions you have uh, in, your, in the chat. It's easier uh, for me to track them like that. That being said, I'm really glad to see you under quotes again. Uh, so let's share the screen. It's been a long summer, a long summer, a happy one, I hope, for most of you, for all of you. Uh, but uh, it's time to get back to business, back to sharing. So chat is here, uh, the list of participants is here, and let me first start with introducing myself very briefly. I know this can be boring for some of you, so I'll be very fast. My name is Victor Enta. I've been drinking Java for uh, 15 years already. Uh, I'm a Java champion now. Um, I've been doing trainings for the past eight years. Uh, thousands of developers, more than 80 companies already, uh, all throughout Europe and the world, really. My topics are Spring, Hibernate, Java 8, Functional Programming, um, Domain-Driven Design, Clean Architecture, Clean Code, Refactoring, Unit Testing. I really love these topics around here. Uh, Java Performance, Secure Coding recently, and Reactive Programming. So this is what I do uh, for companies throughout the world. And I'm also doing conferences and meetups like the one we do today. By the way, this is an event uh, um, shared mainly to my community, which uh, has grown into 3,000 and something people. Really proud of this. Uh, so people that want to become better, people that want to uh, step out of their box and learn continuously stuff. Today we will cover a topic which is rather basic, but still, uh, even so, I will try to make it as interesting as possible for, any, for, for all of you. Now, these things that you see over here, you can, you can get via some company training. This is what I do normally every day. But I'm also organizing recently master classes, stuff that you can join. I mean, live training that if you want, you can join yourself, uh, join another group of developers in a, in a live training. And I also have some video courses on Teachable. So if you want to get to any of those, the easiest is my website. Very, it's here around. So my live master classes, video courses. Good. Now, uh, I also have a YouTube channel on which even this video is published right now. And I have a community, the one that we do today, and a little, little blog. My contact details are, are here, my mail, my, my uh, uh, website. In case you have any questions, maybe after watching this video, if you watch it offline or afterwards, feel free to ask me anything uh, on my email. Uh, as, as much as my time allows, I will do my best to answer you in know, several days, weeks. <laughs> I hope it is. Good. So this is the agenda. This is supposed to be a basic introduction to mocking there is another upcoming video live training that i will that i will organize about more advanced topics about mockings about mocking on my teachable platform i have the upcoming webinar it's called mastering mocks that's like a follow-up a bit more about how do you design tests with mocks if you care to join it's there on my website but today stabbing methods mocking methods what the heck are dynamic dynamic responses um retries how do you test those um, matching arguments, spies, mocking statics. Let's hope we can uh, we can uh, cover all of those. So let's get started. Let's imagine we have a piece of logic. Let me get to that first. We have this telemetry diagnostic controls, right? This telemetry diagnostic. Just a second. I lost my um, my. Where are you here? My live streaming. Thank you. Okay, great. Now. I have this class over here that I'm, I want to test. But basically, I want to test this first method, the check transmission. This is what I'm planning to test. Now, the trick to note here is that um, I want to test this method because I plan to change it probably, right? So uh, I want to test just this method. I will not be changing anything besides this method. This is what I 
realize after doing some experimentation. So we will assume that I know that the scope of my changes will be limited to this particular class, nothing more than this method. So what do I do? I want to just cover the the, this method with tests. So let's write, write our, our first test. I will assume you know nothing about mocks, probably you may be not even work in Java. At the end of the training, I will spend some time to share, to point you to other frameworks that do the stuff that we see today in C Sharp, PHP, and TypeScript. There are equivalent ports of this framework that we will be using today. Right. So to, to call the check transmission method, the first thing we need to do is to get to that method. Now that's a, an, inst an instance method. So let me instantiate telemetry diagnostic controls and let's call check transmission. If I do that, I am supposed to pass a force. At the beginning, I don't know what this argument is supposed to do. So I will just call the method like you would in case you it's, it's the first time you see this code, you want to unit test that. So we will assume and we don't know anything yet about this code. And we will be discovering the code as we write the tests and also practicing mocks. The first thing you see when you try to call the method is a beautiful null pointer exception. Uh, originating, just a second to check my technical stuff, yes. Originating from this particular dot over here. This disconnect is called on a null, right? So how can we work around that? We need to fill this telemetry client, but this is a class we don't have, we don't want to go inside. So it's, let's be fair. The first thing I would do if I wouldn't know mocks and I, if I would just brute force try to test that, I will try to instantiate and to set the telemetry client, you see? I have a setter which assigns a telemetry client in this field. So set telemetry client instantiating that class. That should be the first idea you have. Unfortunately, I mean, doing that is a good start, but um, it will come back to you with problems because at some point you will get another exception later on. Uh, because you see, this class that I just instantiated over here ends up doing some external remote college, which is impossible or not desirable to call from automated tests. What would this stand for? Um, that could result in a call to an API that is paid, to a database which is slow, to something that you plain and simple don't want to call. So if you just open the class, you might be already tempted to never get into this class because it's so ugly. This class, I am not planning to change. This class will be out of my, out of the scope of my changes. I don't want to be changing and testing it. So uh, instead of trying to understand that class and to bang my head uh, to, to test that too, I want to put, to put a mock instead of that class. What is that mock? Now, to start with the basics, um, the first thing you could do in any language in the world, you could try to introduce first an interface in front of that. Implement some new interface, some new interface. Show the keystroke that you are using, arrows. Uh, it's called zoom it, the stuff that I'm using to draw lines like this. And I also have a tool, Rami, which is called presentation assistant. This is all recorded in case you get then you don't, don't get the chance to see. Presentation assistant, which is showing the shortcuts that I'm pressing when I'm doing stuff like that. Okay, now this new interface that you could introduce could summarize, could, could, could uh, contain all the methods that you ever call in this class and then implement an alternative um, implementation for testing, like a test double for this telemetry client test double that could implement this some new interface. That, 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 that we did that 20 years ago, but I didn't do that 20 years ago. People were doing this 20 years ago, interface. Extracting an interface and then re-implementing the interface in another, uh, with a plain class that would provide to my code under test this, that will provide the desired responses. In other words, this should not crack with exceptions if I, if I call it, right? So that would be the classic approach before the introduction of, of mocks in 20, 2001. Now, Ever since then, we have a better, simpler approach. We don't need to implement any interface. We don't need to extract any interface and put methods in that new interface. We don't need to do that. But instead, we will mock this class. Now, how does that feel, first of all? It goes like this. And instead of instantiating the telemetry client in the class, if the class is external and I can't implement with some new interface, and I don't, and I don't want to use mocks, 
should I use adapter pattern? Yes, Daniel. Uh, but Daniel has, a, has an interesting question. Um, if the class is external and I can't implement some new interface, like I'm trying to sketch over here, and I don't want, I will question this, I don't want to use uh, mocks, what could I do? The, 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 the best solution you have in this case is to wrap an adapter, a new class, which will surround um, private final uh, adapted uh, legacy class inside and it will provide a layer of methods right some this is like delegate uh, some layer of methods that you will go through to get to that old class and then you will mock this one or do the same stuff i did over here with him with interfaces on this yes introducing an, an adapter layer between right now over here instead of instantiating telemetry client what i could do to get a telemetry client is to mock it now what is mocking i wanted to be very i want to be very sharp and clear about this because many people using mocks for years and years don't have this very clear a mock is the same thing that i would get when i would write the following code telemetry metric client mock extends telemetry client this is what mokito is doing this is what most frameworks out there are doing you don't need an interface to hack the behavior of this class why if telemetry client on the disconnect as you, as you saw just now throws an exception what you, what is enough for you to do is to imp, re is to override the method over here and to just do nothing that will that will allow my test to pass because as you see this type is an instance of a telemetry client so it's assignable and it's, it can pass it inside this class very easy and that would that would allow me to go past this line this exception okay this is what happens under the hood when you're using a mocking frame because you see my test is green doesn't check anything yet but it it went past that line this is what happens when you use mokito you don't need an interface what happens under the hood is that a new class is generated in memory using cglib a new class is generated that's enough for now which extends the original class so that the new class is assignable inside with any uh, in any other variable in php and, and, and typescript this is even easier due to dynamically typing it's easy to yeah, just duct tape there and there now this is what happens under the hood which means that if your class is final then you're screwed <laughs> Sorry. then you don't have you can't do that anymore right and neither would be neither mokita will be able to do anything about that so if your class is final then that's a no-go mocks can't be used and that's a case for what daniel suggested using an adapter around it you can't just mock a class which is final not on, not, not without some heavy tools like bytecode instrumentation like changing the bytecode of that class but that's out of scope a bit for today now uh, doing that by hand is also an option but it's very cumbersome so what do we do instead is to rely on Mokito, which is the most used framework of mocking today in Java. And I dare to say worldwide, it's been ported to many languages. And you can mock the class, telemetry client.class. Now, uh, what this is doing under the hood is generating a subclass of my original class. And the methods in the subclass are all overridden, overriding the ones in the, in the original telemetry client. The new methods aren't throwing anything, aren't doing anything. And in case you wonder if those methods are, are returning anything, the values which are returned are the defaults for their types. In other words, since I mocked the client, if I do client dot get online status, what I will have in this, uh, the behavior that I will have is that this is false. This is the, like the default behavior, the default expectation for a type like Boolean, false. You, have, you, know, you, don't, you don't necessarily need to program every method. The goal, as you probably suspect, will be to teach those, method, those methods what to do. If you don't do that, they will have a default behavior anyway, which is to return the default value for their types. It's a false in this case. In case you ever have like this aversion, you will get a null back. But what is a bit surprising is that if you have a method that returns a list, let me show you that first of all um, if you have a method returning a list many people don't know that this returns you an empty list not a null like you might have expected 
it's a bit strange. So the default for a, for a collection is empty collection. And I had bugs in, in my tests because of that. I didn't expect that it returned me an empty list. So as a rule of thumb, the methods once you mock a class will return like the reasonable results for their type. Okay. What the exception that I have over here is due to my call over here, but that this assertion passed. Okay, so what is happening under the hood is like subclassing my original class and overriding every single method, providing like some defaults for every re for every method in there. Right, good. So no more interfaces. There is no need for interfaces. Mokito can mock static inner classes. Mokito can mock static in. Yes, why not? Let's give it a try. Um, static class x. All right, and you have some method that returns like return one, and this should return int, and then you mock x. You just have to say mockito dot mock x dot class as an experiment again, right? And this gives you the mock which is of type x, and this mock if you call the method, then assert equals is equal to two if or let's say zero for integer is the default. That should be no problem for Mojito. Right. Give it one, one, more, one more shot, and then we'll continue. So um, it's no problem. It will be a bit tricky if it's an instance method, if it's, a, if it's an inner class, not nested. That would be a bit trickier. All right. So yeah, let's wait for a second to see if it's passing. Good. All right. Now, um, what would we do to continue our testing over here? Our goal is to able to, to, to cover this test, this existing code with tests. So the first thing we, we run into right now, if you, we uncomment this and we run again, we will get an exception. If you, if you remember, we saw this in the, in the log. Unable to connect. We will get this error because this method get online status, since it returns a boolean, it defaults to returning a false. Mokito uses ByteBuddy instead of CGLib nowadays. I recently found out that. Thank you, indeed. They're very good. It's another uh, library for creating classes on, on, on the fly, but it's more powerful, ByteBuddy. Unable to connect. Why? Because this returned false, and false with a not be before it turns into a true. Right. So I need to teach the method to return, to return true, not false. We do Mokito dot when. And then we call the method that we want to fake. In our case, is client dot get online, just like invoking the method. And that invocation can be programmed to return a true. Of course, we won't repeat Wikito dot when we will statically import this. And we will see what we do about that in a second. Good. Uh, the order is pretty bad because this is this is wiring up, and this is. Uh, programming the mock to return a true. This is teaching the method to the method to return true. It's like I want to be very clear for all of you. Okay, it's like overriding the get online status and returning here a true. This is what happens under the hood. All right. Good. Now, um, I also mentioned I will show you some integration with the testing frameworks. So uh, we don't ever do that anymore for many years already. Instead, we use in case you are in GUnit four, you will use run with Mokito JUnit runner, which is a, um, a runner in unit four, is a is a, like infrastructural stuff for testing, which is a which is in charge of creating your test class and wiring it up. In case you are in unit five, like I am over here, you need to do extend with. The point is that you want to tell Mokito, uh, Mokito extension, to look into this class and to fill it up. What do you mean fill it up? I don't want to be doing this because I will be doing a lot of mocking. So instead of these definitions, what, what, what I will do, I will define a variable of type telemetry client, which is the client. And I will put an annotation on it called mock from Mokito. Now, because I, I summoned I summoned the Mokito extension, it will look on the field and it will create automatically, automatically do this basically. Right? Now, besides that, I will use inject mocks and tell Mokito, or also Mokito, to inject that mock into my telemetry diagnostic controls, which is my stuff that I'm trying to test over here. Now, this injection can happen via setter automatically, as I will prove in a second. Or, in case you prefer, as I will suggest, in case you prefer to pass the dependency as a constructor parameter, it also it's also able to do that. I, even more than that, you don't really need you don't even need to have a setter for Mokito to, to work. 
to inject your dependencies. It will use reflection to see what field you have. And in case in this class, it sees any field of this type, it will automatically set the private field to what to the to the mock it created. So in technically words, you don't need this anymore. Set telemetry is useless over here. If even so, let me switch to using um, constructor based injection like we do today. Add constructor parameter and this is like constructor injection and this will still work. And it saved us three lines of code from here. And this is what we that I, this is what I see in all the projects that I, I go to in all my groups and all my training groups. Can you move your camera to another corner? The used circles are often blocked by the camera. Damn it. No, I can't, but <laughs> that's a weird problem. One second. I can do the following. I can change this to put on the bottom. Let's give it a try. Ah, better. Perfect. Good. Now, I got past this if over here, but since I got on this if, why not testing this exception? So what we could do is to already have, we are exploring the production code and writing tests all together. So it, you could say throws when not online. Now, uh, what, what you could do next is to teach this false. Only if you return false, you will get an exception. But you see, if you, if you paid attention, you might, you, might, you might think now, why do I need to do that? The default is false anyway. But it's a good practice to explicitly uh, stub. This is what we call this, stub. To teach the method what to respond in production code. It's a good practice to explicitly set the, the value that you rely on in your production and not rely on the defaults. So if I have a false, then assertions uh, assertions are dots. I hate this API. Assert throws. You're not the only one hating it. Throws. Assert throws. Expected type. I'm throwing an illegal state exception class from this particular piece of code. The G unit 4 was far better, in my opinion, but anyway. Assert throws. Um, assert throws this. You, you, will re, you will check the exception. And there we go, we have our first uh, useful, reasonable test, all right? Good, now let's move on. What else can we do with this, with this mockings, with, it, with these mocks? Not only to teach methods that we can't, uh, to, to respond the way we want in production, but we can do more than that. Let's look what happens next. At some point you do send, and you want to check that your code, after you will be refactoring it, will be, We'll, we'll be still calling send with this argument. So let's do that. Let's test that it sends. It sends what? It sends the diagnostic message. And to do that, you need, after you call the production code, to ask your mock. By the way, you realize, right? This is like our, our, this is our, our agent over here. This is, we control this guy completely. We can ask our guy if your production, if our production code called the send method. How can we do that? Um, if, if, if you think of how can we how we can implement this without mocks, is really really difficult. Really, you have to to. And I've seen code doing that from the old days. You would you would you would override send and you would mark like send called true, and you will have a field like this put on the. It's very 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 cumbersome. Very annoying. Mocks allows us to do it much easier. You just say mockito dot verify. You will verify that the uh, client, our agent, was invoked the method send. Now, to finish this, you need to provide here a string message. Well, what you can do over here is to say any. Any will match anything, any value, not, I mean, any string. Um, wait a second, control enter rerun the tests any string you, you pass from here they will be they will uh, pass the test um, this verify in case you never call not i'm not using a spy no i'm using a plain mock i'm using a plain mock we will get to spy a bit later now here this is a it's not a spy the official term from literature is called a mock for this case you call um, such a fake object a mock when you ask it whether it was invoked some methods you call it a stub if you teach it what to respond in some cases maybe public yeah i know ah all right so you mean like this yeah yeah <laughs> okay uh 
uh, send any. Now, this is correct, but in case you change this and you put like a different message, the test, as you can expect, it will still pass. So what you can do instead is to provide the actual string that you expect to, to, to receive. In other words, you could put this string in the send, in which case, if you change anything in, in that uh, call, if you, if you pass a different message, it will crack the test. Don't you think that Mokito syntax in your code makes the test verbose? If you had this class, perhaps you could extract it away from your test. You mean like a fake class. Interesting. Interesting. I've seen that. I've seen that in some cases. Um, there is a code smell, uh, test design smell, in which you keep stubbing these methods in the same way over and over and over and over again. At some point, if you use that fake object, that, that mock, 10 places, it could make sense to create a dedicated class for it, extending, extending the telemetric line. But it's a fine line. In 99% of cases, it doesn't pay to create a new class for that. Plus, the test, the, the, that class is highly specific to this set of tests. Perhaps other parts of the code will want different behavior. It, it depends. It's an interesting question. It depends very, very much. All right, so send will not, now there is another thing you could um, another thing you could hit uh, at some point in case you want to take two arguments from here. One argument is the message and the other one is another, let's say, string that you don't care about. Um, if that's the, if that's the case, whatever. Uh, then uh, in case you want to check ju just this argument, there is a problem that occurs sometimes you need to put here equal so imagine you want to put here like an any this for weird reasons doesn't work like, let me test again because i had the most recent version of mokito perhaps they, they fixed this problem but in the old in the, for as far as i remember this doesn't work uh, the moment you uh, try to uh, to explicitly match a value of an argument um it allow it asks you you to put matchers in both. So in other words, once you use any over here in practice, you need to use equal on the other side. It's stupid if you ask me, they could have fixed that probably, but it's a weird thing. Equal means like this argument in uh, when, when, when you invoke from production must have been this, not AAA. Right. So this test will now will pass whatever I pass over here. If I change this, as long as I pass the correct argument as the first argument, it will still pass. It's like partially matching arguments, if you want. Honestly, honestly, I very rarely use this technique in practice. Very rarely comes useful. Most of the time, you assert the, the values explicitly, all of them. Most of the time. Right. You could use any if the test, if the code under test is putting some random or some UUIDs over here or some time bound variable or some local date time now to skip that part out right so for simplicity i will cut out the argument from here remember all of this all of this is recording so if i'm moving too fast the youtube video will be recorded for you Victor, if there is time i read many articles of singleton and global state are very bad for testing static methods let's hope we get there we will no, no, i don't want to skip now the basics now this should be this otherwise it will it will fail good so verifying method invocations after the fact good now another feature that so this discussion is about features of mocking what can a mocking framework do for you the next thing that you you want your mocking framework to do for you is to allow you to get a reference to the objects not only i mean pay, pay attention i'm not a, um when you are asserting, by the way, I should have been here. Okay. When you are asserting a particular value over here, you know the value beforehand. But what if the value that you are given, that it is given to your mocks in production, in tested code, what if the value given to your mocks is not known to you, is new? This is a pattern. The production code instantiates an object and passes this object to your method, to the method of your mock. The pattern is like, I want to be able to assert the state of this, of this object. So I need to get my hands on that object. This is the pattern. It happens when you, the mock 
is passed an object which is instantiated in the tested code, but that object never gets out of my tested code. Is there bound? Is invisible? Is is not accessible from my tests other other by other means by besides the method fired to my mock. So for this particular case, it's like we need to capture the argument. How do we do that? We need to preserve this behavior over here because otherwise we will fall in the exception. But besides that, I want now, when I verify the call to configure, right? I want not only, I mean, if I would, if I would have to write an, uh, an argument, I would have to use any. I, I don't know what the, what the object is, but instead I want to capture it. Now, there are two ways of doing that. The, the class is called argument capture. And I am trying to capture what? Client configuration. Configuration. This is like captor. Let's name it. And I will, and I will call, I'll make it. Let's see. For class. Client configuration dot class. Don't be scared for this. I know it's a weird syntax. The first time you see it, it's like, what the hell is that? This capture over here, you will pass here like this telling your 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 client telling your mock to spill out to you to tell you the argument of the, the to tell you the actual parameter that was given in production code after you run this line this line checks that the configure was invoked otherwise it will crash and also fills the captor so after that you can do captor.get value and you can get back the config that you want to assert and then you can do config dot get at um, um assert that that is equal to what uh normal archica mode archica mode normal am i okay no archica mode normal you can do that because you got your hands on the config object from the mock so the mock not only responds with what you taught it to do but also records all the arguments ever given from production code. So after the fact, you can ask, what were the arguments given to you? Give me those arguments so that I can check them uh, further. I broke something. What did I do? Message equal to. I deleted something from here. Let's see. Am I, I am the telemetry client. What am I doing over here? Just a second. The parameter name is say. Let's see. Oh yeah, sure. Message. Pardon me. I shouldn't be watch. I shouldn't be looking in this class, right? I'm not supposed to change that class. Good. All right. So run again, and that's kind of it. Good. Now uh, the new way, the geek way of if you have to do this very often. Now this is supposed to be about the basics, but as a best, as a good practice, try to avoid capturing arguments. But that's a, that's a test design smell. That's a production design smell. But if you want to do that for some legacy code, there is a f easier way, captor, shielding you from doing this, this, this call, basically. You can do this over here, and you just use the captor from here. I will name it a bit more like config captor, probably, because it's wider scoped. But that's kind of it. And it does the same thing. Private. Good. All right. Captures. So I wanted to cover this for you. I did stubbing. I mean, teaching methods what to respond. Mocking means verify. All right. This is like when, then return. When, then return. Up until here, it's a bit yeah, easy. Now comes the fun, uh, argument matching. We've seen that with equal and any. We've seen these in, in practice. And we've also captured arguments. Captor. Argument captor. Does Mark now know what? <laughs> Thank you. Now, um, how about stabbing dynamic? It works in WhatsApp, by the way. Uh, how about stabbing dynamic responses? What, what, what the heck is that? This is a. Um, I would only use such techniques in case I really don't have control on what happens. I, do, I can't change the code. If I can't change the code at all, there is a trick you can do. Um, um, Imagine that I don't have a, 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 a supporting use case over here, but imagine that you want to run explicit code when, for example, the uh, the receive or not receive, yeah, receive 
if you want to run explicit code when receive is called, what would you do? Well, you would do the following. You want when you will start the same. My client, when it's called receive, client, receive, the value returned needs to be that I want to provide there a random UUID. That's the, that's the scenario. Why would you do that? I don't know. In general, it's a bad practice, but then, then you, you can provide a dynamic answer. Now, what the heck is this? New abstract truth. No, it's a bad one. One second. New answer. Thank you. This answer, what am I answering with a string? Good. Now, this madness over here allows me to provide a callback. If you fancy more the lambdas, probably this is, might look better for you. This invocation, you are given access to the, to the arguments. This is what you really usually are concerned of. You can get the arguments if there were any. I don't have any around here. Um, I've seen cases in, in which based on the arguments, for example, get argument of the position zero, they were adding something and they were returning the, uh, the value back, depending on the argument. In my case, I want to do UUID random to string providing a random UUID every time. I'm curious if I really need this. No, I don't. Good. Now, this receive over here, I will demonstrate that it worked by looking at controls, get diagnostic info, and spitting out on the console. If I was right, I will, I will see after the fact, if you follow the code, the receive will provide the UUID random, and then I will print out after the fact the diagnostic info that was saved in a field. This is your UUID. If I run again, I'll get different values. I'm not sure why would you ever need that. It's dubious most of the time, but in case you need it, there you go. Now, you asked me whether I would create a fake class, another implementation of the telemetry client. In cases in which I repeat such behavior, if I if I if I if I if I go ahead and repeat such such dynamic stabbing in multiple places. It's then when I would think of creating a class that like an alternative implementation, like class, a fake telemetry client, extending, as I said, telemetry client, in which in the receive, I will put this return. If I found myself um, repeating dynamic stabbing, this is a sign I might need a fake. This is indeed a, a hint towards that. Good. This is called dynamic stabbing, and I wanted to point out to you over here. Not necessarily, not, not very useful in practice. Other things I've seen people abusing it for <laughs> is to do sleep. I know it's dubious. It's very strange to do sleep because that would uh, delay your whole execution of the tests on Jenkins, but you can technically do that. Can delay it. if you want. If you are using some sort of some or some, some sort of timeout, if you are testing like multi-threaded code. It's not a very good idea, but who knows what you are facing? You can do that. There is no other way you could you could impose delays, you know, by, by, but but with a callback. Interesting. Good. And you can use that to implement to, to simulate and to test retries and delays. You can introduce delays. Now, how about retries? Now look about look on look on this example. I have a while. While what? while online status is false and the retries are less than three some people from you are probably already thinking about retriable i know but i'm just saying in case this is like an old style uh, uh, retry mechanism what you could do is to pro if you want to test that and you want to see what happens if i retry more than four times what you can do pay attention over here then return, you could return true, and then a true, and then a true, and then a false. It's like subsequent, it, it's the first call to online status will return a true. It doesn't work. I should return a true false. If I return a true, I will not loop. I will go here, but then if I return a false, I will throw exception. The first one returned true. The second one, three exceptions. And you can use this, use your mind, what you can do. You can see what happens if I return false two times? What then, right? What happens if I return four times? You can play with this, uh, like these are 
subsequent values returned after the first one. Right. Another mechanism I forgot to mention, what if, what if you want, for example, your receive to throw exceptions for you? Let's, let's see that in action. Uh, actually, I will derive from the first one. I will get an exception. What exception? A runtime exception. If uh, my receive throws, you can teach your mocks to throw, of course, then throw, then throw. It can be used for in practice. Who knows what you're doing over there? Your runtime exception. Good. And then that exception, of course, will propagate back to you. All right, so throwing an exception, returning values, dynamic stabbing, subsequent mocking, and one more important for cleaning your tests up, it's good to know that if you find your tests, many of them doing the same stabbing over and over in multiple tests, like I'm doing here, just in two places, here and here, this is like the default stabbing. In some particular cases, I want to go with true, false, or different. But in most of my tests, and please imagine not two, but five of them, in my five tests that I have, I always stab it to true. Why? Because otherwise I will get the exception. If I pass it through, negated is false, so this is out. So I will always return true to test anything around here. So then you can take this part and put it in a before. But this leaves a question before each because it's shared initialization, a typical stuff to put in your before. And this will allow to remove it from all the tests that you have. But this leaves a question, what, what happens on the cases in which I want it to be different, not true, but maybe true false or false. Now, if you reprogram a mock, this is what happens over here, the behavior will be overridden. So if you do then return again on the same method, you will override the behavior with the new one. This is useful because you can have like a default stubbing for your methods, but for some one or two tests, you might want to make it different, to return a false. Very useful to clean up your tests in practice. And there you go, the tests are still passing, okay? So uh, there is also another way to uh, brutally reset. You can, you can reset the, the mock completely, making it, making it forget everything that you ever, ever did, right? All right, now, um, in recent version of Mokito, there is a deb debatable feature. For example, if you stop the receive, imagine you, I am stopping the receive in this test. Think of it. This test checks that this exception is, is thrown, right? And I am still doing when, and then uh, client.receive, then return uh, what we have here, value, some value. But you see, this value is useless. This is never useful for my tests because I never get to run my receive. Tricky, huh? Then return is useless. Receive never is invoked from production. In this particular case, Mokito recently detects the problem because this is most of the time due to copy-pasting tests, to copy-pasting tests and forgetting to clean up the unnecessary stabbing, unnecessary stabbing exception. Uh, Mokito tells us that I, I saw you mocked this method. Uh, where the heck is the method? On this line. On this line, you are doing a stubbing that is never used. And at the end of the tests, the Mokito runner from, 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 from above automatically checks whether your stubbing were all used. It, this is supposed to help you to clean up the unnecessary stubbing, all right? But some people believe this is a mistake. If for those people, this is more fine grained it has to do with, this is some difficult discussion to do. I don't have time now. But the point is, if you want to disable this, you, you can use the an annotation on the class to disable that and to, and to stop Mokito, Mokito from failing. But again, they've, did, they've, they've implemented this uh, to help you because this is usually a bug in your tests. Some, code left there for nothing. All right, all right, good stuff. We've covered quite a lot of stuff over here, including lenient. I didn't expect to cover that. Lenient box, which lenient stubs uh, are not offended <laughs> if you don't call them. Offended, offended if you don't use them. Stubs, stubbing. Stubbing means teaching methods what to respond, right? Stubbing. Dynamic responses was then answer. 
retries and delays, we've seen it with the answer. And also the idea of doing then return and then saying true and false. Spies and mocks and statics. Ooh. Ooh. Spies. Oh my God. This is where we get dirty, really. Spy test. Now, this is a very powerful technique. You have to know about that, but you have to avoid it. <laughs> It's that kind of technique that you usually want to stay away from, but there are some madness complex legacy classes that you really, really need those at the first stages, especially if you are less. But folks, I'm doing I'm doing trainings on clean code engineering testing for thousands of developers already. If you are not so skilled in refactoring and unit testing, you might be very afraid of touching production code without tests, and I it's very reasonable to be afraid it, that fear is helpful and you might end up in such cases in which you want to test some public complex method in a very very large class and you can imagine here like like the dozen lines here a dozen line here that you want to test and then in the middle of that function a call to another private method and let's make it private at first this private method if you open it is also very complex it just kills your brain, right? So what do you do? What do you do? It's very complex. You don't want, you can't humanly test both this. If you are J brains, the god of unit testing, okay, you can do that. But if you are like at the beginning of your career, this will kill you. And most of, even the experienced developers will, will not test all of this huge code in one go. They will want to fragment it and to unit test that in isolation. To, re to end up with reasonable, maintainable tests and understandable tests. So you are in this case in which you have a private method, but you see what you read here and there, they will tell you in case you have a private method that is called from the middle of a large complex public method, the classic solution is to make this public and to move it to another class. But my God, that's not an easy refactor to do. In case this private fu function is called by many others in their class, in case there are dependencies, uh, other methods that need to come with this one when you move it, this is not an easy refactoring. So you need a way out of it. You need a way to be able to focus your tests only on this, because this is what you plan to change. You don't plan to change this baby. So what do you do? For example, you want to assert just the fact that if the data returned by this huge private function, which I will collapse. I don't want to know about this anymore. You want to assert that if this private huge function that I don't know anything about returns me an empty array, I get back an empty optional. How do I do that? Well, the way to do that is to use a spy. Now, a spy is a very weird thing, if you ask me. Let's see if I have this, uh, um, have a, a, a visual, representation of a spy let me see if i can find it for you i'm on a different monitor that's what that's why you don't see anything right now on a second it's very beautiful i've i've looked for it for for many many years but finally i found it let's let me show it to you a second and here goes my thing come on how, how do you do that alt shift there you go oh come on there it's good this is my friend a partial mock this is a partial mock what do i mean by that it's an object it's an object that both has concrete methods and tested methods both has mocked methods and tested methods in the same object in the same freaking object what's that in practice i want to be testing this but I don't want to know anything about the other function. The first thing you do, you make the function package protected so that you can, you can see it from the tests. And then you put a spy, not mock, it's a spy. And this spy can be programmed, can be partially mocked, basically. How do you do that? You can't use anymore the classic syntax when then return. Instead, you need to start with a different syntax. Do return. It's a weird syntax backwards. Do return. Don't ask me why it's a difficult discussion. Why? Do return what? What am I testing here? Empty data. Empty um, collections. Empty, what's that? List. Empty list, thank you. 
when you start vice backwards. When what? When my target is invoked the method private complex with the argument 13. Why 13? 13, 13, 13, 13. Good. I am partially mocking a class. All right. The same I can do below. And I can say in case my, uh, my uh, uh, method returns a list with one value inside, list of a or one and then two, then the first element in the list will be returned in the end as a response, as an optional. So I am partially mocking a class. Again, this is not something good. This is something that you do because you can't do anything else. A partial mock editor, exactly. Um, it's not fun, but sometimes it's the only way out, especially if you don't, if you are afraid and don't know how to refactor the class. In my job, we weren't allowed to change private method to package protected when testing. So we had to use power mock. Now, my God, no. So if I wasn't be, but look how this reads. My God, we weren't allowed to change. We weren't allowed. I would, I would leave that job. What do you mean you weren't allowed? What? You mean you are supposed to do what? Just to pour more shit around the code. What, what do you mean you weren't allowed? Because what you get is more shit. If you can't see the method, then you can't technically reference, reference, reference the method. The only way around is to put that under, under, under question under under quotes and that's with the so power mockito that you mentioned over here allows you to mock even methods which are private but with the cost that you need to hard code the name of the methods between quotes because you can't possibly compile code referencing the private method from the other part so that's even worse because if you rename the method then boom your tests will fail it's even worse scenario so yeah, don't tolerate people telling you not, you are not supposed to change the code. That's a bad position. That's a bad job, really. You should be entitled, you should be in charge of your code. You should be responsible and trusted with the good of your code. Anyway, what am I saying here? Life is life. Good. Now, the last topic here is testing, is mocking. It's a hot topic. I'm sorry, we only have 10 minutes to debate that. I'm sure many of you are interested about um where is my test for, for to start with just a second the last topic was mocking statics how the heck do i mock statics and why is it better is it is it is it, is it good now in preparation for today i've read a dozen of articles i had my my beliefs but i had to document myself now is it good or is it bad to use static methods that's a question that we can debate for for hours to put some some arguments, some pros and cons, right? Pros and cons. I don't want to be ex ex extensive debate over here, but just like uh, some sketch, static, pro, instance, I'm talking folks about whether it's good to use static methods or not. What's good about static methods, honestly speaking, right? The first thing is good, it's easy to call. You don't need to dependency inject anything. You don't need any service engine. Then if you push, you can call it even from a GSP, even from a from a callback from just pre port. So you can call it from anywhere. I don't really need anything, right? That's 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 a very good plus. The other plus is that easier to um, to craft pure functions. It's a difficult discussion over here, but pure functions are functions that don't do side effects and they return. Uh, the same values for the same inputs. If your function is instance, then the discussion about purity becomes much harder. For a static method, for a static method, it's easy to, to, to say it's pure. If it doesn't change any argument, then it's done. If it returns the same value, that you don't need to think about state surrounding the method. Right? In most companies, testing is left to last. That's bad. I know, I know, I know, Daniel, I know, you are right. And in most companies, we just want to see that it works and then we test it. How to put this is uh, in a way understandable for financial arguments, but in the other way, they shouldn't forbid you changing the code. They should trust you that you don't break stuff when you test it. I mean, tests written uh, 
post-mortem after you've written the production code first of all they won't have the the they won't help you clarify the design of the production code and secondly they will tend to be much more cumbersome than they will end up if you write them as you write production code of course that's why tdd is so good to practice and to try to use it as much as, po as possible the only reason to use power mock is on messy code yes ralph i agree with what you say it is not under your control even if you want to use power mock on your code you have a bad design most of the time 99 percent i totally agree with that but as i was saying for pro for for static these are the advantages for instances they also have huge advantages for example that you can that the um in an instance method you can use injected dependencies and those dependencies can use polymorphism and can use aspects it's it's a it's a deep i'm going a deep way over here in a method placed in a class my service if you make it spring right if you make it spring and then you inject in here an another class um, and you have your method using o then this opens the door for spring to inject over here a proxy class this opens the door that this other class that i'm mentioning over here uses inside of it aspects like for example our beloved transactional right or cacheable or stuff like that it you open the door pre-authorized to aspect oriented programming annotations interception of methods something somewhat specific to java language and c sharp this is that they are not so common in typescript and php for example but um an interception of methods okay this is impossible to do if 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 you would call like another class dot stuff they, there is no room for that besides bytecode man manipulation which is something weird so in other words this is an, a pro of of an instance method you can use dependency injected uh, uh injected dependency that can be proxied and can be messed up with then also another thing if you inject here this you can then inject in here a mock and you can test what this class is doing without without um so it makes testing easier on the long run especially if the static method is not is calling others if the static method is calling other methods that i believe is a code smell this is weird because if you want to unit test this one you won't be able to do that except also with power mock so let's start let's show what i want to show first um easier to test easier to test due to dependency injection now leaving aside this debate it's a long run a long discussion let's see what does spy do thank you the spy as i mentioned is injecting it is creating a class which can be both tested and programmed what to do can be both tested this is production code and can be both programmed what to do you see i'm programming a method and i'm testing another one i hope it helps the question from you from youtube yeah i know people will tell you about static people will tell you that if you are going static you don't do oop and this is bad this is like religion i don't I, this is like yeah okay you believe in allah i believe in god so i mean it's it's hard to reason not oop <laughs> so what uh, i'm a very pragmatic guy i don't know you judge for yourself still if you have some legacy some 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 uh, some legacy production code which is using some static method there are ways and there are fun ways to use static mocks nowadays i will show you the rest of the code i won't type it for you i will just show it how it feels like first let's read slowly with me this is a call to static method static method from the util let me show the code here from the util is checking that initially the call to this method returns minus one okay it's checking assert that cool so this proves that the method here remains is the original one and then here is the fun part in the recent mojito you can do this which is very fun very 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 cool try with resources mocking the static class for the duration of this try block on the current thread pay attention you can run these tests in multi-thread they won't uh, they won't crack either 
in on the current thread this class is mocked from here to, to here and then i am programming the call to static method to return one as a consequence when i call my production code over here when it calls the static method i just told it to return one one plus one equals two incredible <laughs> amazing uh, basically allows me to uh, to 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 mock this one but it's very 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 interesting approach for this duration for this thread very cool can you share any open source uh, which have implemented mojito for learning implemented mojito implemented mojito is open source what do you mean mojito is open source is it a, is it a test smell if i have only verify and mocks in my test in some cases verify is useless if your method is, if your test is only asserting very, it's not a test smell in itself. No, it's not a test smell. I don't, I don't believe it's a test smell. Other questions? But when you have a facade that connects to multiple APIs with different clients, David asks, oh, David, hi. When you have a facade that connects with multiple APIs with different clients, an orchestrator for executive understanding, is, is that the case when you can reach, easily reach 10 dependencies? Yes, and the tests, will have to mock 10 collaborators and you will feel bad about that for some good reason but in practice it will look like that and it's ugly yes uh i know i know i know the facades as you say the orchestrators are the places in your architecture when you are allowed to have a lot of fan out coupling to depend on many it's a trade-off so i want be angry if you have five mocks in some classes but again it comes with uh, it depends it depends whether you use five dependencies in the same method then i will say what are you doing if you are using three or four eh, you are on the verge yeah. my god daniel too much too long comment so in your to your case david it's uh, in some cases i will tolerate a lot of coupling it's for the sake of making the code clear in other parts in the meantime please look here how i'm faking the time okay i'm faking the time my god i can control the time i'm faking a library call this is dubious and a bit dangerous but you can still do that open source with mojito examples my friend i've showed you so so, so she, i've showed you all the things 99 percent of things that people use in production code in teams around the world and the git i will share with you again the location for the for these uh is in the chat right now just you can okay. done done it's it's for you all right and now from now on questions let's see what you have victor your personal opinion let me paste this for the so that the, all of you can see what am i what i'm what i'm answering how long you've been using mocks and fakes do you compare the two are fakes viable sometimes fakes by fakes daniel uh, da, Daniel means fakes, means a test client, uh, no, it's a fake client, uh, fake telemetry client in my, in my case, telemetry client, extends telemetry client, which is a fake, okay? There are viable in case you ever use, in case you find yourself doing a lot of times, do answer. If you do that, if you do when do answer, that behavior, as I explained, could be better fit in a specific class. Typical example of a fake. Typical example of a fake. I've seen implementation, I've done implementation of in-memory repo. Implement I file repo. I have I had a repository of files and I was I created another implementation of that thing in order not to talk to files. All right, that is the viable implementation. Uh, and of course, it, it, they had somewhere around here a map in memory kept with or a list of files of string and some string content, file contents. Right? You can do that in memory. Uh, and the original implementation was working with files, of course. Do you think project only with fakes, not with any mocks, could be maintainable? No. No. Um, uh, mocks do have their place. I mean, it's far easier to provide. I mean, 
it's a tricky discussion over here. Uh, <laughs> short answer is no. I don't think a project only with fakes is uh, has maintainable tests. No, mocks are really very useful. It's a reason why all the teams I ever saw are using mocks because building fakes creates a lot of classes and every time you change the api of this interface you have to change both the test and it can become very cumbersome plus the fact the subtle fact that this implementation pay attention this is a test only implementation that can end up coupling your tests to each other tricky your tests will suffer at some point because they will all depend on this class. Whoever changes the implementation in this class, boom, 100 failed, failed tests, 50 failed tests. Ah, tricky. With mocks, the stabbing is independent somehow. You can't just break everything with changing the implementation. But again, it depends. I need to see the actual code. There are cases in which fakes are useful. Okay? Four lines with verify. With fake, it's possible to do like verify client, new assert. Oh. Verify, oof, verify client sent new assert at common. These are matchers, my friend. These are not fakes. These are Hamcross matcher. I've skipped that today uh, because they kind of went out of fashion somehow. I don't know. Uh, you say like send, and here you can pass a matcher. Uh, I'm not sure how. It's a bit tricky here. I don't really call exactly how you do that. Um, Actually, the equal that you have over here is a matcher, and you can create your own custom matcher. Um, this is a different thing than a fake. These matchers do can save a, a lot of effort if you repeat themselves. So, folks, just think about, about that. You can actually say like is a checker, like, uh, like a static factory method. In, it could save, but they are not very fashioned any, anymore today uh shouldn't test readability matter yes yes but i don't think the readability of my test over here is so bad really i mean it's pretty obvious what, what i'm trying to do over here uh actually wait you mentioned captures this one this one for this particular reason to avoid captures what you can do is the thing that you suggested and i agree it's an interesting discussion interesting idea um so it is useful but I wouldn't adopt it like a mainstream technique. Maybe here and there, if you find yourself doing this time, uh, this thing a lot of times in many test classes, not in a single one. In a single one, you can, you can, it's not a drama if you do that, really. No? But if you find yourself repeating that in many places, it becomes cumbersome. All right, let's see another, another question. Uh, what do we have here, David? I remember the class clock to simulate the time. Yes, clock.fixed. You mentioned but this is java and i forgot to do one thing i forgot i promised to show you alternatives to mokito in other languages let's do that first we have here the port mokito port in typescript which has 708 stars this is big this is very big uh, exactly the same syntax you saw me doing today exactly the same stuff we have uh mock you in c sharp which is slightly different thing but the same idea do something when you call that returns this this is like an answer or returns true and we have of course php with uh, php unit the same stuff method with and php storm is smart, is smart enough to correlate these methods with the production methods so if you rename the method we'll rename it too also here so there are ports doing the same thing method will return or in the same with verify the same stuff every everywhere everyone is doing the same thing all right good now I got this out of my mind. You can answer more questions. Let's see what you have. Very cool stuff. We have five more questions in in uh, Zoom. Stick close to answer these. Where the heck is my live stream here? So let's take from Zoom now. Can you mock the security context? Oh la la, Valentin. Valentin, if you are if you ever think of mocking uh, security context, there is an annotation specifically for you with mock user. It's it comes from from um, Spring test Spring security test this is the uh the, the pom you want the dependency you want to include spring security test with mock user and you can you can say test you can say user equal or role equal 
and you can authorize your request or you can tear down completely the security if you want like for example in a test in a spring boot test you can do uh, active profile disabled security i've done that in several locations so you don't need to mock security context i see where you're heading you want to be able to do uh, security context holder dot get context that's if you're that's if, if you that this is a static method you can mock this static method, but I will look for other ways first, like, for example, using the classic with mock user in Spring Security to have here what I want. I, don't, I would not mock directly with static stuff. Shorter. Four lines of verify. Oh, I understand now. Uh, Daniel, I think I've, I've got a point with, uh, with the matchers. With we are, if you are using in-memory repo, how can we make sure we don't we are not polluting the in-memory data between tests? Very good one. Let me answer. Let me show the question first. Uh, in-memory repo, like I've sketched over here in the previous, in the previous answer over here, I've said here. How can we make sure we don't pollute the test? The only way out of it is to call a clear somewhere. Like in a, in a, bef there is no other way really. Before each, you will do like in memory repo dot clear. There is no other way, right? Um, okay, you can clean up the memory base. That's exactly what I said. I will agree my capture, yes. How to avoid falling a lot of tests when you use mockist approach? Ooh la la. Maxim, for this question, join my next webinar. <laughs> it's three hours long. Uh, really that exceeds uh, it's it's a tricky discussion that's why it takes three hours to explain um if you want if you want like a a hint um the hint very in short words it's called mock roles not objects google this and you will see what you find there's an article people end up using mocks today everywhere without reasoning about the role that they are mocking they are mocking random methods this is not a good practice and leads to very fragile tests. You should think very, very careful about the API that you are mocking. Don't mock anything. Don't, don't, don't mock everything. Tricky one, Maxim. That's a very tricky one. I found mock you to have issues with asynchronous methods. Uh, mock you. Mock you from, uh, from C sharp. Uh, beats me. I'm a native Java. Sorry. Any suggestion for Scala equivalent of Mokito? But did you Google it? Uh, oh, by the, by the way, Scala is using Java under the hood. You can use Java code. What's more keto? It's not as functional style, perhaps. But let's see how many likes. Yeah, reasonable, reasonable, oh, reasonable, reasonable. Twenty-three, reasonable. Yeah, I love it. So I would definitely give it a try. All right. Uh, a new instance of an in-memory repo is okay for each test. Yeah, why not? If it's a lightweight method, why not, Daniel? Right. Uh, again, uh, this is the webinar I mentioned to Maxim. It's a tricky one. And let's see if you have any more questions on the YouTube channel. One second. Where is my YouTube channel here? What What do you What about if it's needed to mock same type of object? Oh, pop, pop, pop. Abu, if you are around, if you are still around, can you ask again in more detail? I don't get your question. What about if it's needed to mock same type of object for inject to um beat me? I don't, I don't, I don't get what you, what you mean. If, if you can clarify, mock same type of object. I don't get it. Mock same kind of object. Please refine the question a bit. All right, so. Uh, if there are any questions, keep shooting. I really love when you have a lot of same types, multiple, same types, multiple objects. I still don't get it. Same types, multiple object. Help explain. For future ideas, I wouldn't mind some more hardcore TDD videos. <laughs> um, yes um interesting yeah daniel yeah why not if you have some um um some suggestion email me my email is in the chat in zoom um what uh, kata do you want to do you want me to to to, to try out um a hardcore tdd um it's 
suppose you've been writing at least 1000 tests and suppose you've been doing design for several years it's not what do you mean oh 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 uh, someone tries to uh, answer to, to clarify this is this what you mean uh mock mock this wouldn't work i mean you the only way uh, you can do make it work is to rely on manual Thanks. <laughs> Look, this is crowd answering. Very good. Thanks a lot. Class. And then you could inject these through constructor. I don't know any other way of doing that. Programmatic stuff will, should work. No, not with our annotations. Why do we need Lenient at the beginning sometimes with new Mokito versions? Because you get the exception that I showed you when you are mocking some stuff and, you, and when you are stabbing some stuff and you don't use the stabbing. It's the case right here when you are stubbing this receive method over here, but you never get to run the receive in the production code that you're testing. It's usually a bug. Why don't you run it? Because, because, because of this online status, you get to uh, exit with this illegal. So you never reach this line. This is most of the time a bug in your code. You know when this becomes annoying um, in practice? When you put this receive at the beginning of the, of the test class in the before each, and so the client is stabbed this method every single time because you think this is a, it is a common stabbing. But for some tests, it fails for reasons that I've explained. This particular test never reaches this stub. Supermarket kata. Right. Can you email me, please? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can you please email me? Um, the link, if you can, maybe there are variations. So here, oh my God, what an interesting topic it was today. Uh, what I mean, right now, this will fail because there are some tests which are not using that stubbing. So this is one, I think you use Mokito options, I think it's called. Mokito uh, settings, that's it. And then you pass here uh, strictness equals lenient. Because you have this. The code that is now running, uh, okay, let me comment this first. Run again the test, we'll see it failing and then we'll pass. Cones or caveats of using mock rather than mock? Yes, uh, there are, Fatima. Advanced tricks, but let me point to the, to the problem. First, let's wait a second to see it failing. Thank you, it failed. If it's lenient, Mojito won't be mad of you stabbing a method for nothing, okay? Yeah, yeah, all right, good. Very, very nice, folks. Now, this is, this is what I mean, a community. People answering on YouTube stuff from, okay, excellent. Any cons of what what can go wrong with this? Now, uh, again, Fatima, a bit advanced, but there are some cases in which you don't want to test this class in isolation from everything else. There are some cases in which you have a friend class, friend class, deeply connected to me, to which I depend, that has some methods that I don't want to test in isolation. So the case in which I am unit testing these two, these two wider scope unit tests, and these two surrounded by mocks. In that case, I would want to inject a dependency to this. For example, private final, this, something like that, through constructors. This wasn't, wouldn't work if you use inject mocks. Mokito wouldn't know what to put in this dependency, in this argument in the constructor. So in that case, you will have to fall back to creating your stuff manually, right? Uh, you will inject your stuff manually. That's the only case that I know of in which you need to create your stuff manually. Client, the mock, comma, new real stuff. New real stuff. Uh, a bit of a niche if you ask me, but that's the case. Equals, there is no other way than switching to using uh, this right now, okay? That's your answer. I always have a bad feeling when I'm using verified. <laughs> My God, very advanced questions. Very good, very good, Ralph. Ah, Ralph, hi again. I always have a bad feeling when using. I love this when how it starts. I have a bad feeling, a gut feeling. This is what an experienced developer sounds like when using verify because I'm I'm in the area of white box testing, so. You, you know, as, as opposed to black box, you know what you are testing, which leads to less maintainable code. 
because you have to look in the method to see what calls you should verify. This is a feeling if I got it right. So it's, you feel wrong by looking at the implementation to see that this method is here so that then you need to verify that method. Where the heck was I verifying it again? Somewhere around here. Here, or send. You have to see the method to put the test. And you feel this is wrong. You feel, you feel this is coupling your tests to your implementation. And you feel this leads to fragile tests. This is when I get, when I start using fakes, we get, we get, we get by the possibility to assert. And what would you do? You will put here a fake. And then instead of doing the send, you will ask the fake. Are you sent? <laughs> Oof. 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 Um, not convinced. It's a lot of a lot of testing framework to write. And in the end, you get to do kind of the same thing. The problem that you are, the, the gut feeling that you have might be from the fact that you feel like you are just passively testing the code without really rethinking it. The act of creating, this is a, this is a subtle one, the act of creating a class, my fake, gives you back that design insight, allows you to put the send method, allows you to refine, to review the API, allows you to review the API that you were mocking. The fact that you are reviewing the API that you were mocking is a good thing. So I will acknowledge your efforts to create the fake but once you see the fake is in good shape, when, once you see the fake has reasonable methods that stick together nicely, then delete the fake. The exercise of creating the fakes it is exactly the most important point that I, I was about to make in my training. The act of creating this fake is, is the goal. If that fake has meaning, has a well-defined role, and you are on a good track. And you, I will come back to my, to, my, to, my, to, my, to my mocking over here, but more comfortable knowing that I'm not just mocking and verifying random methods, but a well-defined role. Dr tricky, Ralph, tricky, tricky. Look, folks, Ralph, if, if this question, uh, if you have to say more than that, email me and I'll find for you half an hour to debate this. I'm really curious about your, how you feel. You drop me an email, it's in the chat. Uh, I would love to talk about you. Such a, such a remark comes from deep insight. I want to know how you're thinking, All right? Uh, I have, uh, if I have dependencies which have no side effects, if I have dependencies, oh my God, this, this gets better and better. No side effects, dependencies with no side effects. That's fine not to mock them. I, I, I read here, no verify, yes. In other words, if you ever do when um, repo dot find by ID, then return my entity, then you don't need, and please don't <laughs> verify the repo that was invoked find by, that would be really stupid, right? If you want a, a someone, someone big telling you that's stupid, then ask Martin Fowler. Martin Fowler, um, mocks aren't stubs. It ha he has a very influential article, very old article about this. It's 2007, very influential article that tells exactly what you want to hear, right? Good, very, uh, so uh, I can just use the real instances in, in the test. Well, it depends if that's a repository and that calls for you to start some, to put some real database or to start some test containers, I would think to, well, depends. Um, but uh, again, if you are putting the real instances connected to a database, then you don't need to stop it either, right? Uh, but if that object, let's take another shot. If that object, if that object is not a repo, but some logic only component that doesn't talk to external systems, okay? just logic, 
then I will tend to agree that if that logic is, is not extremely complicated, reasonable, okay, uh, medium size, I will try to test that with the real stuff without mocking it, without stabbing it. But if that's very complex, it may deserve to put a mock in between what you're testing and that class over here. It might deserve to, to separate the testing, to be, to be able to cover all the branches, basically. So um, the problem is not performance usually, is the availability of an external system or the amount of complexity that you have to check, the amount of branches that you have to go through. But in general, I like your idea. Why use why mocking if you can use the real stuff? If, if using the real stuff is not way difficult, way more difficult, then use the real stuff. Use mocking when it's unreasonable to go through all the ifs and all the branches in one go, or when you are connecting to an external system that you want to, or a, data, a database or an API, right? You may, may you may not want to fire up wire mock to test that part of the code. Sub sub comp. What are you doing, Diana? What, what is that? Wait a second. That beat that beats me. Spy spy. Oh my god. Oh shit. Spy spy. Really? How can I instantiate this? What do you mean? Sub sub comp. Uh, you mean like a spy calling a spy? Like the component one calling sub component one? Oh my god. I will be afraid of this. And then you will spy both of them. Oh God, you need some redesign, man. girl, you need some redesign over there. What do you mean? Component calling another component and you spy both of them. No, that's, that's, oh my God, no. That's very bad. Very, 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 very bad. So you need some redesign over here. I mean, it's like you are testing some methods from here, some methods from here, but other parts you are not testing from here, from here, from here. No, redesign. Take the blue part out. What are you testing there, really? Yeah, it's not, uh, it depends. Unit test can be very broad in term. In general, unit test needs only to be reproducible. So um, it's a bad design, sorry. <laughs> oh my God, more question on YouTube. I think here, right, right, friend plus a spy. You could use a spy. I know I don't, in my case that I was showing, I don't want to um, to create there a the previous question, basically. The friend class, I want to leave concrete. Mocking science, <laughs> do some TDD with mocks. I would definitely um, recommend you watch some videos of Sandra Mancuso, which is the state of the art guy in this regard. It's called, it's, I think it's outside in, outside in TDD Kata Sandro. There are two or three episodes on, on YouTube, brilliant stuff, outside in TDD part one, two, three. If you are an experienced developer, you will survive. If not, you will die. It's not an easy. It's one of the most difficult cutouts I've seen. Um, all right, what other things I have here? I still have to find a way to use Wiremock with Amazon. Have you tried recording the answers from Amazon? There is a Wiremock recorder that might help you. Folks, I'm planning really to, to, um, to do some random consultancy. <laughs> The questions you have are far better than what I've showed you, really. Perhaps you were just here in chat. How? What's your life? What's, what's bothering you? Very good. Very good stuff. So half an hour of questions. I love it. Uh, I really missed that this summer. Good. There are no more questions. So paste your question again if I missed that. If not, email me or maybe wait for the next session. I will try to make it monthly or be monthly. Uh, what can I say? That's kind of it. If you want to join some stuff and to talk more with me three hours, then uh, this is my next webinar. It's on paid, yeah. Or you can wait for the next um, meetup. Done, I think I'm done. I'll wait for five more seconds. Perhaps there are some questions. Five, four, three. Two, one and a half, <laughs> one. Good. Thanks a lot, folks. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot for your questions. You made all the game, basically. Thanks a lot for the question. Thank you. Bye. See you for the next one. Bye bye. See you. Remember, remember the recording is on YouTube. If you want to see it there, it's on my channel. Bye.
the buy front. Three, two, one, and out. And 